Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, what we've got this time is a Android head unit to replace the CCC unit in the E60 5 series. Uh, mine's the M5, but I don't think there's any real difference in how these connect between the models. I did get the 8 gig of RAM, 128 gig of storage version. They do sell, I think all the way down to a 2 gig, 32 gig unit, which I don't recommend cheaping out on. If, if you go low on the RAM, you're going to regret it. They'll be laggy. There'll be performance issues for sure. Uh, people seem to have good luck with the 4 gig of RAM and the 64 gigs of storage. That seems to be a good happy medium, but uh, this one happened to be on sale and I figured it's good to future proof. Um, in general, I think all these come from China. They seem to be quality units. Uh, so as long as you get one at a good price, I don't think you can really go wrong. There's no preferred brand per se that I've been able to find. Uh, they all are lacking instructions. Um, if you're lucky, you'll get some instructions on the Android, which is, you know, most people know how to use Android by now. Um, but there's no specific instructions for the installation usually. I thought I was going to get lucky with this QR code on the front of this one, but <laughs> scanning this takes you to the store where I bought it from, which is in the top corner here. Um, I did go to AliExpress to order this one. Uh, it was around $500, I think, and then there was $100 shipping, some taxes, some import fees. So just shy of 700 bucks by the time it landed here, which is a bit, but you know, gotta have your toys. Um, the stock head units don't have blue, well, they've got Bluetooth, but it's for telephone function only. The uh, Bluetooth does not allow you to play any audio through them. You do get an auxiliary input jack on most models. The early ones didn't come with it. Mine didn't come with it. So I actually had to, before I even get to this, install an auxiliary jack uh, and, and code it um, to get that to work. Uh, I already did that. Mine does now have the auxiliary function, but make sure you have that before you try to get one of these because Otherwise, you will not have any audio. So it came inside another box. Uh, this was within another box, all taped up with yellow tape. So pretty well packaged when it arrived. It, it wasn't bad. Um, it seems to be well packaged, just some good tie density foam in here. You do get this booklet of 11 pages, which I can tell you right now isn't going to be enough to install one of these. Um, yeah, here's what you can expect to see. Functions, some basic settings, um, how to do an address book and use Bluetooth. I mean, just basic stuff. There's some specs in here. Uh, but other than that, a <laughs> 15 amp operating current. I really doubt that. It's not going to be anywhere near that high, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it's good for a comical read. Um, <laughs> this unit can easily be broken by gravity and pointed things hit. Please pay attention when installing. It can easily lead to a traffic accident. If, if you need to operate the relay functions, please park your car, then operate. Um, that's a good point. I mean, you can even, you can even watch videos on this and you don't want to be doing that when you, uh, when you're driving. So just be mindful of that. Non-professional people, please don't install or maintain this unit or it will bring some faulty actions to badly damage the original car circuits or you unit circuits, bringing you lots, bringing you unnecessary loss. Hmm. Well, we're just going to pretend I'm professional and I, I'm used to unnecessary loss, so 
there is um, a good website uh, that I've been able to find um, that it has accompanying videos for how everything hooks up. I'll, I'll link that below. It, uh, it's quite self-explanatory when you get into it, but yeah, nothing, nothing in the box instruction wise. So we've got a couple of bundles of cables. Um, it also comes with a micro SD card. This one does, which is good. And then you get the uh, display itself. So uh, the first bag here, um, some of you might not get this one. Um, I sprung for the review camera, which is what this is. So there's a video, video power cable, a power adapter, and then a little uh, camera unit. Um, this one is meant for my car, so it actually replaces the latch in the um, the latch for the uh, trunk release, uh, and then the camera is built into that. So it's actually really nice quality. It feels very similar to the original one. It's all rubber coated. Yeah, well, it's got a rubber gasket over it. <laughs> we'll see how that works, but uh, button feels okay-ish. The BMW stock one is a little tactile button. This one you can see actually triggers a micro roller switch on the back, which, you know, we'll see how that holds out. It should be okay. So we'll try this. Uh, we'll try this out and see how the picture is. The other bag is the main harness. So the way these install, it looks overwhelming at first. Um, <laughs> a little scary even, but uh, you've got a Wi-Fi antenna which plugs into the back of the display and you've got a sandwiched cable. So they make this fairly easy actually. You, uh, you unplug the connector out of the back of the stock unit, plug theirs in and it just sort of sandwiches in between. And then there's a breakout cable off that that plugs into the new display. Um, also in here are your videos for the camera and also a front 360 camera if you want. Um, so a lot of this won't even be used unless you hook up a camera. The auxiliary out, uh, this is how audio gets from this new Android unit to the stock stereo. So you need to connect that to the auxiliary on the car. That's why you have to make sure you have that in your car. They do give you a cable. Um, I was lucky mine didn't have the auxiliary connector. So I actually bought an auxiliary um, kit off Amazon. I can put a link below uh, that has the male end. So the stock, the car normally comes with the female end. So you, you plug one of these into your phone and then into the car. So you need one of these cables. Um, but I didn't want an extra cable in the way and I wasn't going to be using a jack in the car anyways to plug into my phone anymore. So I got a cable that has the male end on it. So my car connection should plug directly in here without this cable. Um, but I mean, if you have an existing system, your jack looks like the female version like this, and it'll be either in your glove box or at the back of the uh, center console. Uh, the other pack of cables is the accessory cables. So there's USB outs um, and the video connections for the back of the unit. Uh, you can connect um, a TV, uh, video in and audio. So if you have back headrest TVs, it can actually display on those as well. Just kind of nice. I don't know if anybody would have that, but they throw in the cables for it. Um, and then, uh, we have a GPS antenna. Um, I'm going to be playing around with where this gets installed. Some people just end up throwing it inside the interior of the dash above this unit and call it good. I, I don't know if that's going to give you enough signal or not. Um, 
the company I was looking at suggested installing this in the corner of the dash and just having it sit up on the dash, but I'll play around with that. I don't know if I like the idea of just having a pod sitting on the dash like that. I mean, it does tape down, but it sort of looks clunky. Um, and another company suggested putting it inside the A-pillar, so the piece of plastic going along the side of the pillar by the windshield, they suggest mounting it near the top under that plastic, so might take a look at that. But we'll, I might just see what the signal strength is like inside the dash, just because it'll be easy and it's not hard to move it later if we need to. The main unit is of course made to replace the existing screen in the car at the top of the dashboard. It, uh, you know, it's plastic. It, it feels like fairly decent quality. You've got your uh, micro SD slot there, uh, reset and the mic, built-in mic, which is nice. You don't have to install a sec separate mic for this. Um, on the back, the connections are all there. So the breakout, the breakout cable connects here. Your uh, extra video cable connects uh, connects here. Your USB connects here. You've got your GPS antenna connection here, your Wi-Fi antenna connects here, and that's really about the only pieces I'm gonna be using out of this. Um, yeah. So, uh, in the next video, I'll be going through installing this and we'll uh, give it a try and see how it, see how it works. Um, the idea is you can switch between the existing iDrive screen and the Android screen just by holding on your menu button for three seconds. So that was the main reason I jumped on this to gain uh, to gain Bluetooth functionality and be able to have any Android app available that I'd like to download. Uh, I'm going to be looking at installing Torx on here. I have a Bluetooth dongle adapter that should connect to this screen too. So we'd have onboard troubleshooting and gauges if we want to. Uh, but also not losing the functionality of the iDrive. This will look completely stock for the most part until you hold the menu down. So that's that was a big selling feature for me anyways. So, yeah, join us next time, guys, where we'll uh, install this and give it a whirl. I'll probably break the uh, install of this camera into another separate video because it looks like we're going to have to be tearing the trunk lining out, the parts of the Moldings and carpet will have to get pulled up and it's got to get routed all the way from the back of the car to the front So that'll be pretty lengthy all in itself. I, I think so We'll probably make a separate one for that, but I'll I'll make sure that to link them all in so you can find them Take it easy and have a great day